Hello lovely people. Welcome to Time with Auntie Midwife with your beloved midwife, Kenneth. Hi, my beloved audience. I am happy that we've met again to continue our discussion on the male reproductive system. And I am also glad that we are a step close to achieving our aim for discussing this sensitive topic, which is to prevent or minimize the incidence and prevalence of teenage pregnancies, unintended pregnancies, and their unwanted repercussions. We are getting there. I know you are all doing well. I am also fine. Thank you. Today, we shall continue our discussion on the external organs that make up the male reproductive system. Already, we began with one of the organs in the scrotum, which is the testes. So today, we shall continue with the extra two, the epidermis and part of the vas deferens. And so, to be part of this beautiful family where we learn, have fun and vibe, you already know the ritual. Kindly subscribe to the channel, watch the video, like, share, comment and don't forget to tap on the notification bell to get the updates once it is being posted. Mwah! <laughs> so to the topic for discussion the epididymis and part of the vas deferens. So first we shall begin with the epididymis. Plural of epididymis is epididymites. So if you don't hear epididymis, you hear epididymites, which is the plural. And so they are comma-shaped convoluted tubules. Convoluted means that it is squared and is about six meters in length. It lies on the superior surface of the testes and travels down the posterior aspect to the lower pole of the testes where it leads into the vas deferens. With the epididymis, its tubules have ciliated epithelial lining. Ciliated means that it has hair-like projections and they are microscopic. And so, ciliated epithelial lining enables any mucous particles which is passing through any tube which has the ciliated epithelial lining to move in a specific direction. And so, with the two bowls that make up the epidermis, it has ciliated epithelial lining and this helps the sperm to migrate to the vas deferens. So it goes straight to the vas deferens, it doesn't branch anywhere because of its ciliated epithelial lining. I know that you get it. <laughs> Thumbs up. And the next one to discuss is the vas deferens. But we cannot talk about the vas deferens without making mention of the spermatic cord. And so one will ask, what is the spermatic cord? The spermatic cord is the cord-like structure consisting of the vas deferens and its accompanying arteries, veins, nerves, and lymphatic vessels. And so you know that it is necessary we talk about it before we go to the main thing, which is the vas deferens. And so what this spermatic cord does is it suspends the testis in the scrotum and it passes right from the abdomen downwards from the abdomen it passes through the inguinal canal then it comes down to the testes in the scrotum <laughs> and so to the main man the vas deferens and so the vas deferens also has a plural which is the vasa differentia so if you don't hear vas deferens you hear vasa differentia it is also called sperm duct or ductus deferens oh it has a lot of names like me <laughs> and so this vas deferens they are also tubes about 45 cm in length what they do is that they convey spermatozoa from the epidermis to the prostatic urethra unlike the epidermis the vas deferens has no ciliated lining and why someone will ask why is it if it has no ciliated lining how is it able to convey spermatozoa from the epidermis to the urethra it does it in another way <laughs> since the secretions of the seminal vesicles and the prostate gland are also passing through this vas deferens what they do is that they provide a medium for the passage of the spermatozoa do you get it now? 
The rastafarin has no sleeves and lining, but the secretions from the seminal vesicles and the prostate gland make it possible. They provide the medium and the spermatozoa passes through easily to the urethra. This explains why we all need each other to achieve certain goals. If you are in need, you can rely on someone and the person assists you. As easy as that. <laughs> and sperm, oh, they are stored in the vasa while they mature and increase their motility. So when the epidermis stores the sperm temporarily, the vasa difference also takes it or conveys the spermatozoa from the epidermis, sends it to the urethra, ready to be ejaculated. Did you know that it is the vasa differentia that are being ligated or cut during vasectomy? Oh, again, I'm telling you today, it is the structure that is being ligated during vasectomy. And so, let's move a little deeper into vasectomy. Vasectomy, also called vasoligation, it is an elective surgical procedure for male sterilization or permanent contraception. During the procedure, the male vasa differentia are cut and tied or sealed so as to prevent sperm from entering into the urethra and thereby prevent fertilization of a female through sexual intercourse. Hope you get it. They said they need to cut it, but you know, worries. Sperm will still be produced, but it will only enter into the vasa or the vas deferens or the vasa differentia. It enters there. It will not be ejaculated. And so what will what will it do? It will degenerate, just like that. <laughs> this is amazing. And so contraception is not for women only. This is one of the myths about contraception. It's not meant for women. You can agree to go for the sterilization as a man, whereby your vasa differentia is being cut and sealed. You could use sperm all right, but you will not ejaculate sperm to fertilize the female ovary during sexual intercourse. So please, you can opt for that. And this will help you minimize or prevent the incidence of teenage pregnancy or unwanted or unintended pregnancies thank you so much lovely people for your time today and i'm so grateful that you've tuned in i know that you've learned a lot i've also learned a lot and i enjoyed that discussion we shall meet again in our next episode do take care of yourself it is your life it's your choice i love you Mwah.